I, again, I'm a big believer in experimenting with yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, look at me. I'm I'm still keeping up with my <laughs> habit. I'm still sticking to it. I'm so proud of myself. That there is some magic number of hours I need to, you know, have fun. That will be enough for me. Hi, I'm Greg Mastreader, and this is my podcast on rationality, transhumanism, productivity, and trends of development in society. Today, here with me is Katerina Akulic, a behavior designer, a founder of Habit Lab, a habits guru, and a person who has coached me on how to form good habits and who is now helping other people do that. Hi, Katerina. Hi, hi. Thanks for having me. Uh, the first question that I like to ask is uh, how having a child, because I know that you uh, have recently given birth, how is it affecting your good habits and your <laughs> habit formation? You know, that has been um, a big um, experience with, with the child, uh, like being pregnant and then uh, delivering a child indeed. It really changed my perspective. It really changed the way I think about habits now in two ways. First, in terms of um, importance of sleep habits, sleep-related habits, and second, uh, in terms of um, making habits more pleasurable. Let me elaborate on um, uh, those things one by one. First of all, um, I really understood, now I have the first-hand experience uh, in why sleeping properly, having a good sleep habits is absolutely important. Of course, we all know that um, sleep is important. We, it's like no brainer, right? Everybody knows that. But I mean, now when I've been six months uh, sleep deprived, so I, I have, um, with the small child, you often have to, um, your sleep is very disrupted. I wake up every two hours at night to feed my baby and uh, I don't have sometimes uh, enough hours to sleep to catch up with my, um, with my night sleep. So that was the first time I realized how taxing this is when you don't have a proper sleep. How um, all other habits really don't matter if you don't have a proper sleep. Uh, it's, now it feels like, you know, um, some, some of my cognitive abilities are not on their peak performance because of sleep deprivation. That struck me. I kind of knew that from books and from articles, but having this experience yourself, ex going through this yourself is a completely different thing. Because before that, um, I always had a chance, you know, to catch up on sleep. I prioritized sleep. I didn't, I never been really sleep deprived for, for, for months like I am now. And that made me realize that before working on any other habit, exercising, nutrition, productivity, uh, it's, it's just would be a waste of time and effort if you don't fix your sleep habits first. So that's my big takeaway number one. Uh, and, and the second thing I, I realized is that um, making habits pleasurable is really important. I will give you an example to to uh, to better uh, explain what I mean. Before getting pregnant and delivering the baby, I um, had quite a strong um, exercising habits. I uh, was doing strength training three times a week, every week, and I was doing it until the very end of my pregnancy. I have a YouTube video on my channel when I'm ex exercising, being like nine and a half months pregnant, and I'm like, yeah, look at me, I'm... I'm still keeping up with my <laughs> habit. I'm still sticking to it. I'm so proud of myself. And funny thing about that is that despite the fact that I was doing this strength training for years, three times a week, and on top of this, I had also some aerobic exercise and so on, I kind of tolerated the fact that I never really liked strength training. I, moreover, after each of this exercise and session with my trainer, trainer, I would feel completely drained of energy. I would, yeah, I would feel like, yes, I did it. Well done, me. <laughs> Another training. But in the process of this kind of exercise and routine, I was counting in my head, okay, it's like 30 minutes left, 20 minutes left. 
hoping for the training to end as soon as possible and being, you know, very angry and frustrated and not really enjoying the process. And after the training, the only thing that I was able to do is just, you know, um, take a shower and go on the couch and watch a series or a movie because I was so tired. Um, and I tolerated this. I thought that's, well, that's a part of your exercise in life. That's, that's how it's supposed to be. Now, when I don't have any, you know, any milligram of spare energy, when I don't have, uh, like a lot of resources, because as I said before, I don't have a proper sleep and obviously taking care of a small baby. Well, it's, uh, it can be very, you know, demanding. Uh, it's a job in itself. I don't have a spare energy anymore and every habit that I am trying to bring into my life, I'm making sure that it brings, gives me energy or pleasure or perfect, ideally both, not draining me. And don't get me wrong, it's not to say that when you have a child, you have to think about these things like, does this or that habit give you energy or drains you? No, I think that you as a person, for example, who don't have children yet, and maybe, I don't know if you plan on having any soon. Anyway, that's a very good question to ask yourself. If your habits draining your energy or giving you energy, because, well, in my situation, having energy becoming critical, yeah, I don't have spare, but um, for, for any other person, like for you, for example, being, you know, considerate of... Um, of your energy, how you use it, what gives you energy, what drains your energy is also important that can really influence your productivity and your quality of life. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's a very deep observation, I think, <laughs> regarding uh, habits that drain you of energy. I can name uh, off the top of my head several habits that I have that leave me also drained but I think they are necessary. Like life is pain, and you gotta you gotta overcome some difficulties. Uh, uh, do something that you don't like. Like strength training. I'm not partic a particular fan of the process itself, but I like the result, so uh, I, I do it. Uh, and I think a very important insight uh, is uh, uh, the one about your sleep. Uh, very often I see people like uh, uh, people who are crazy about their productivity, who, for example, are my subscribers and uh, listen to my recommendations on productivity, but they don't do the elementary things. They don't get enough sleep. Uh, I myself uh, <laughs> quite often uh, fail to get uh, adequate enough of sleep that's, uh, and, and I'm suffering uh, because of that. So that's, that's a very important observation, although it may sound obvious for some people. Do you, uh, by the way, track your sleep uh, in any way? Do you record how, how many hours you've slept? Do you use any maybe gadgets like I use, for example, Aura Ring? Uh, biohacking gadget for sleep. I track my sleep. Do you do that? Nothing on a permanent basis. I actually don't don't track anymore my habits on permanent basis. What I do is kind of experimental approach. Uh, I plan my like work life in sprints, like you like you do in kind of lean startup methodology, but applied to yeah life like uh, work productivity so i i have normally three weeks sprints and uh, uh, the objective of my current sprint i'm going through is to understand how i can optimize my sleep what activities before sleep what evening rituals um, can help me to fa fall asleep faster um, what helps me feel more energized in the morning what activities help me to uh, relax and uh, feel distressed and uh, uh, keep, keep the, the levels of stress lower? So I now for this purpose I record, I track um, when I go to bed, how long it takes me to fall asleep, when I wake up, uh, how I feel after waking up. I also track my energy and stress levels with Valtteri application. I know you uh, you know this app and you also know. Yeah. Uh, the founders. So I'm checking. I'm, for example, before um, 
doing any uh, evening activity, like for example, playing PC games. That's that's another uh, uh, kind of insight I got during this experiment. Uh, I was playing uh, PC games several evenings in a row and tracking my energy and stress levels on Weltery app before and after. And uh, I was comparing this activity with other activities like going for a walk, doing yoga, uh, watching a movie, taking a warm bath. And I was just checking how different activities influence my energy and stress. And <laughs> PC gaming turned out to be the one thing that I uh, found so far to help me consistently um, lower my stress level and give me a little wow. energy boost. What, so, what, what kind of what kind of a game? I play Sims now. Uh, you know ah, Sims. Yeah. yeah. I but I also like strategies like Civilization, Heroes of Mind and Magic. But recently, oh, this ex yeah, this experimental only involves Sims. I don't know if other uh, kind of games will will have the same influence. So th that's what I'm doing now. Answering your question, no permanent tracking, but this experimental kind of sprints with very specific objectives, very clear measurement KPIs, and then uh, I, I do the conclusion based on these experiments and try to uh, introduce new habits uh, in my life um, according to the results of these experiments. Why I don't track all the habits all the time, it's too taxing. It's just too, you know, exhausting, frankly speaking. And I mean, if you try to track your habits and we try to do it together with you, you know, it's, it's an effort. It's an effort, and yeah. um, frankly speaking, you don't need to, to do this all the time. Uh, you need to have some insights about yourself, what works for you, what doesn't work, and then the implementation phase. You just need to make sure it ha it's happening. And even for this, you don't necessarily need the regular everyday tracking. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, 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 I do agree that uh, when you track your habits all the time, it becomes uh, uh, very annoying uh, after some period of time because you, uh, you get tired of it. It becomes another habit that you have to form. <laughs> At the end of the day, you just sit down and uh, write down what, what you have done, what you have not done. So... Uh, it's it's not sustainable in the long term if you do it all the time. Uh, but I like that you uh, that you are experimenting with yourself. It's like A B testing, right? Yeah, that, uh, yeah. It's startup or really, it, Yeah, it's 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 a bit like this. And you know, in terms of habits tracking, I think the future of habits tracking. That's again my my opinion is in uh, passive habit tracking. It's something that you have now in, in your smartphone, like when, uh, I know Apple health or Google feed tracks mm -hmm. your steps, whether you know it or not, they are just tracking your steps. And whenever you want to check, how are you doing on the number of your physical activity of the number of steps you're doing every day, you can just go there and check, uh, what was the steps for today, yesterday, and so on, right? You can see the trends without actively tracking. So you don't need to, count your steps manually, check in every day, right? The data is stored in passive format, like it's just stored based on your behavior. And I think that's kind of an ideal habit tracker in a way, because mm -hmm. you don't need to really, you know, make a regular effort. But at the same time, you can always check if the habit is there or not, if you if you are doing it or not. Yeah, uh, I think it, it's it's still important to measure things. So if you can do it effortlessly, yeah. it, it's great. Uh, as uh, I think Peter Drucker said, uh, mm -hmm. you can't manage what you uh, can't measure. So the quantified yes. self concept that I that I'm a fan of uh, is is all centered around this idea of measuring stuff. But if you can do it effortlessly, great. That's why I have, for example, this gadget that helps me track my sleep without mm -hmm. me having to record in in some uh, uh, gadget or uh, in written form what what time I went to sleep uh, it's it's all it's all in the app automatically or I really like the app uh, uh, Welter is a great one also I really like rescue time so it uh, records uh, your digital behavior yeah, digital yeah. Ha habits how much time you've spent uh, yeah. on uh, 
productive uh, stuff, <laughs> how much time mm -hmm. you've spent mm -hmm. on less productive stuff, video games, uh, maybe procrastination. Uh, by the way, yeah. all the links, all the links to all the apps that we are discussing here uh, will be in the comments section in uh, in YouTube uh, under this video. So check 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 them out. Uh, so uh, what else have you found out about your uh, sleep and sleeping habits. You found out that uh, video games help you mm -hmm. wind down. <laughs> what else? Yeah, there are a couple more things. Um, first of all, what I was trying to understand is what is the number of hours that make me feel energized and that, that I have a good enough sleep. Because, I, well, I was tracking my sleep before getting pregnant and I knew that my like average number of hours is nine hours. I'm a long sleeper. I need approximately nine hours to feel good um, in the morning. Um, but now my sleep pattern is very different. As I said, I have to wake up every two or three hours to feed a baby. So I never have this, almost never have this long uninterrupted sleep, except for the nights when my my husband is taking care of the baby. Uh, but that's a couple nights a week. All, all, the, all the rest nights I'm sleeping, you know, waking up every two to three hours. And I was trying to understand in this mode, how many hours do I need? Is it still nine hours or like it's more? And um, in this experiment, I figured out that it's, uh, it's actually more, of course. Yeah, I need around 10 to 11 hours actually of this interrupted sleep to feel better. That may also be not fully accurate number because I have this, you know, collected sleep, sleep debt. I uh, kind of, when you are chronically deprived of sleep, you, you, you need some time uh, for, for kind of period of time, you need to sleep longer to give back the debt, right? So maybe that's partially why, why the number for me is now 10, 11, maybe. Uh, later on, it will be a smaller, smaller number. But that's one insight I got from this experiment. Another thing, it's more related now to this evening activities. I had a hypothesis that um, if I have, if I start um, having my free time, like gaming, watching movies, or doing, you know, the stuff not work related early enough, like I don't know, in at eight in the evening. Uh, I will do this for three three hours, and at eleven I will be you know fully kind of recovered, had my spare time, and now I can go to uh, go and fall asleep at eleven o'clock. That was my idea. That there is some magic number of hours I need to you know have fun that will be enough for me, uh, and after that I will be easily willing to go and uh, go go to sleep. Because what was my problem before, despite I was very sleep deprived, I was like very exhausted all the time, it was really hard for me to make myself go to bed early enough. Because, you know, you know, I guess this feeling that you you only worked, you you never played, right? You, you've been doing all the things necessary. You were taking care of the baby, you were working, uh, you know, talking to clients, doing what's needed, and you never did during the day what you wanted. And that's the main reason, actually, why people um, prolong their the day, they, they um, uh, refuse to go to sleep at the right time because they feel that they didn't really leave this day during this day, that they didn't really do something for themselves, right? So I had this idea that if I have like two or three hours of fun time, that will be enough and uh, I will be easily going, falling asleep after that. Uh, and I was just trying to find out what is this magic number? Two hours, one hour, three hours, what is the number? Um, I figured out there is no magic number for PC gaming. Again, for some people maybe who, who are watching this, it's like no-brainer. You can play for weeks, for, I don't know, days, nights. <laughs> never, never feel that you had enough. For me, um, it, it was, it wasn't something I really had a lot of experience with uh, before that. Um, uh, so I was like inventing this thing for, for the first time, seeing that I can actually play for six hours in a row being very sleepy, hating myself, knowing that, I don't know, I will, uh, I won't have a, a proper working day tomorrow, or I will be like dying tomorrow because of lack of sleep and I will be like a zombie and I couldn't just, you know, stop myself. 
keep 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 on playing. So that was another insight when I realized, okay, just finding the magic number of play hours and under play, I don't necessarily mean play like playing PC games. It may be something else. It may be reading books. If you like, you, you like to read, you can read, I guess, for hours as well. Uh, yeah. Doing anything else um, that you really enjoy. So I figured out that I really need to um, create a rituals that will help me distance from these activities in time, stop the activity in time and go to bed. And actually I did what we did with you back when we were working on your uh, sleeping routines. Uh, so I'm using now this evening alarm that reminds me to take a deep breath, <laughs> stop what I'm doing now and just um, consider if I want to continue playing or I want to go and sleep. I call this alarm self-care time. Because if you if you put it in a you know kind of um, you have to stop now time it's it's not appealing it's not sexy nobody wants to do things that you are obliged to do right so this is why I call right. this alarm self care time because this is about self care this is this is about respecting your needs and taking care of yourself and giving your body enough of sleep and enough of play enough of sleep enough of everything to feel good. So that's another insight I got from my experiment. And I'm only in the middle of it, so more more insights to come. Well, uh, there are already uh, many insights, uh, I think, valuable for, for many people. I wonder if it's really necessary to have this uh, uh, spare time, uh, care time every day, or uh, is it not so necessary? Does it depend on the person? I think it depends on what is your day job. I mean, if you hate your job, if you don't enjoy it at all, you you may need this recovery time for hours every day just to feel that um, you you respect your autonomy. In psychology, this, there is a concept I told you about it. It's called self determination theory, which kind of explain basic psychological needs of human and the need for autonomy is one of the key needs and what it means is that every person needs to feel that what he or she is doing is the result of her or his choice not because somebody ordered you to do something not because you have to but because you have a free will and you can exercise it you can you can do what you feel is good for yourself or for you or fun and when you have a job that you hate and i don't think you hated your corporate job but um i guess you enjoyed it that's my guess that maybe you enjoyed it a bit less than your projects that you're doing now Ma least, much less <laughs> yeah i i hate i hated it <laughs> yeah i can so, say it so maybe maybe you can then uh, try to notice if you felt that back there that you need more recovery time in comparison to to your life now. D do you feel like you back then you you needed more like fun time on top to work or that was like the same as now? I I I, I think I actually did, uh, but I didn't have the time to mm -hmm. to indulge uh, mm -hmm. myself, so uh, I just kept burning out. Because yeah, I, yeah. I I had to I had to juggle simultaneously my uh, job uh, in international law and uh, my job my my business my side hustle as a, a blogger so it 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 was challenging but now I agree I agree with the fact that if you if you do something that you really like uh, especially if you do something that you are really uh, fanatical about. Uh, like like I'm doing now, so I, I dedicate almost all my time to my projects, and uh, I, I, and and I like it. Uh, so I need I need less time to uh, less entertainment. I I love uh, uh, watching series uh, Netflix, for example, but I I don't do that now because I prioritize. But that's another interesting question uh, that I wanted to ask you because. Uh, I'm doing something that I'm uh, that I'm really happy about, but still I think that there should be some spare time, some self care time, some rest uh, not connected uh, to my uh, blogging uh, um, business uh, 
at all. And I think that I might be missing out on it. So I might be heading towards maybe not burnout, but uh, less productivity because of a lack of this care time. But on the other hand, uh, I don't want to stop. Like it's 10 p.m. and I'm working and I'm doing something, I don't know, writing a post or um, creating a plan for my next podcast. And uh, I could, I could stop and go do some fun stuff like read a book that's not related to to my blogs, like some fiction, sci-fi, yeah. uh, or maybe even play a video game. But I, but I don't do that because I'm uh, too carried away. And I don't know uh, how much time I should allocate to it, how often I should do it. A uh, couple of days ago, I tried uh, uh, to arrange uh, not one, but two weekends uh, in a row. It was like the first time in uh, several months for me. And it was, and, and it felt really great. Uh, it felt really great. I, 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 I read two books in those two days. And what <laughs> it was, was great amazing. about it? What was great about uh, it? I think what, uh, I think the thing that was really great uh, was that I, I was doing something that I really love, such as reading, uh, and uh, something that I haven't uh, been doing for a long time. I, I'm reading. Uh, all the time. I read all the time, uh, but that's mostly books related to my blogs. So something on some nonfiction on productivity, on trends of development in society, uh, on uh, startups, some stuff, some, something like that. And uh, I read a lot of long reads, but I don't, uh, I don't often read fiction these days. So that was something that I've been missing on. That's why I, uh, it was so pleasurable. And also because the books were really good. I, I recommend them. Uh, Three Body Problem uh, by uh, Lu Cixin. It's uh, a Chinese uh, sci-fi author. One of the favorite books of Barack Obama, by the way. And I think uh, this novel won a uh, Hugo Award, the best sci-fi novel. So uh, this also contributed. Mm. May I ask you... Uh, if you felt more creative this weekend when you were reading fiction books, if you came up with any new ideas for your business while being uh, on yeah, vacation? Yeah, I, 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 I also uh, took uh, long walks. Uh, so I'm now in self-isolation uh, in a small uh, uh, dacha, in a small uh, house uh, next to the sea so I can walk uh, along the shore. Uh, alone. I, I took long walks and they also provoked some deep thoughts, deep thinking about development of my projects. So it was the combination of uh, reading and walking, listening to music also. I, I am asking because actually there are studies that show that it's absolutely necessary to switch your attention from focusing on your work to things that are like completely unrelated to your work. And that's when, where the magic of creativity happens, is that when you're reading a fiction book, you're kind of somewhere on the background, on some subconscious level, you may still think of the things, uh, the challenges of your work, and you may find this breathing space to come up with the ideas that that you won't come up with while you are, you know, you're or all, all your conscious or all your attention is dedicated to solving the problems. It's work problems. It, it may sound a bit counterintuitive, but well, that's how our mind works. You, you need some breathing space for these new ideas. And that's why taking weekends and being disconnected from your work can benefit your work in, in many different ways. Not only because you will prevent the burnout, which is, you know, if you faced it, you know, it's a, it's a sh shitty place to be, right? And mm -hmm. it's really hard to recover from. So it's not only about preventing yourself from being very unproductive because of burnout or because of, you know, lack of, you know, respect to your body and not meeting your, your the needs of your body. It's, it's also about your 
cognitive abilities. It's also about creativity, about seeing your work-related challenges under a different angle. So answering your question, and I think what you just told, you answered it yourself. It's really important to, to disconnect. And I, I know I can relate very much with what you're saying when you're saying that uh, I know I can stop working now, but there are so many things to do. And I really want to, you know, keep pushing my projects. I really love what I do. It's hard to stop. This is why I started this challenge with gaming for me. I I could have played, you know, Sims or other games or or do something else, uh, you know, to, to have more fun. But it just was so hard for me. I, I just um, was all in my, either in the baby stuff or in, in the work stuff, because I also love my job. And only during this experiment, I forced myself to start doing some, something else, you know? So um, I, I am a believer that, yeah, you, even if you love your job, you have to, you have to take, uh, take weekends um, for the sake of your job. I was recently joking with my husband that I think I invented, I, I have invented Sabbath, you know, recently this, uh, mm. <laughs> because I realized one day that there, there should be one day when you don't do any work, any single thing work related, at least one day a week. So I thought maybe, and I don't want to offend here anyone, maybe this uh, old Jewish people who came up with Sabbath idea, they, somebody, some of them caught a terrible burnout and they decided <laughs> it's really, really important to stay away from work at least for one day uh, during the week. And that was a very smart idea. Yeah, so now was, I'm, ca I'm calling it, it my wise. Sabbath. Mm, yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, I also liked a concept that I've seen uh, in an article by some ex, uh, uh, ex top manager of Walmart, I think. He described uh, his concept of untouchable days. Uh, I think once once a week he books uh, uh, himself into a hotel room uh, and spends uh, the whole day there, disconnected from everything, from all cell phones, gadgets, uh, uh, all uh, connection with the outside world. Uh, and just contemplates some ideas, maybe relaxes, reads books. And uh, Bill Gates, Bill Gates also has a similar concept. Uh, it's called uh, the Thinking Weeks. You, 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 you yeah. may have heard of it. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. he just he just uh, uh, goes into self isolation <laughs> uh, in a small in a small hut next to a lake with a pile of books and reads and things. So. So this all uh, is, is, is really great. But I wanted to ask also about the regularity. Okay, I, I agree and I'm now conscien uh, con conscientiously uh, making some time for relaxation during the holidays, during, during weekends. But uh, what about the weekdays? Uh, do I have to uh, like book time slots for rest, for care time? Uh, in the evenings, or uh, is it not so necessary? Should I do it every day or like s alternate? You know, I didn't, I didn't do any, you know, super deep research on that. Basically, what I read and I personally believe in is that during the day you should do a small breaks, at least five, ten minutes every couple hours. Uh, as for the evening rest time, I would presume that it's really individual thing. I mean, um, I, again, I'm a big believer in experimenting with yourself. Yeah. I, I really don't think there are universal rules that are applicable for everyone. I think we're all in very different states. Like, take me, I'm, you know, a young mom with, with my kind of baggage of uh, issues and complexity. You have your own kind of background of things that um, make you very different from, from myself and other people who are watching this. They, they all have their very different situations. So there cannot be one universal kind of rule for everyone. So the best thing is just to go out there and test what makes you more productive, what makes you happier. 
So like a basic rule is, is that I think we all should have a regular, a regular rest. What is rest and what is regular, regular is something for everyone to discover for themselves. That's, that's what I'm well, saying. Well, testing, testing and experimenting on, on yourself is, is uh, the solution then. Well, I, I, I've been thinking about it. I, I will definitely test various uh, uh, time slots for having rest during the day. I'm, I'm already uh, taking breaks. I, I use the Pomodoro system. So uh, regular breaks, uh, short breaks to just uh, stand up, uh, go grab some tea or coffee or maybe a stretch. But uh, long, long periods of rest uh, sound like a good idea as well. Okay, so uh, mm, that's understandable. Uh, another question that I wanted to ask is, uh, uh, you know that... Uh, Everybody now is, uh, or almost everybody in the world is now self-isolated. I've and heard that about all, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that poses uh, additional problems for many people. Uh, I, what would you recommend uh, to uh, the people that are now listening to us or watching us on YouTube? Uh, what are your most uh, important recommendations for uh, forming good habits and not forming bad habits while in mm. quarantine? That's a challenging one because you know, for habits, you for habits to to kind of create them efficiently, you should put yourself in your regular environment, like. If you want to create a habit uh, of exercising, that would totally make sense to start this habit on your average week, not on your vacation time, right? Because your life on vacation may be very different. You will have different contexts, different triggers, different everything. And this kind of context thing, your environment is very important to habit formation. So now when our lives are different from normal, uh, I'm not really sure that it's the best time for creating the habits. It's again, it may sound a bit counterintuitive because we now have m many of us have more time now. If, if your kind of standard way of work is disrupted and you work less, you have more time to, to read, to exercise indoors and kind of to try new habits. But it would be a bit, you know, um, unreasonable to think that you will be able to stick to the same habits when you start going out again and when your lifestyle is going to change dramatically again because you, lifestyle, know, you, you don't know you don't know if it's the new normal maybe also, maybe this will last longer true. no yeah. i mean you're right if that's the thing that is with us like for years now then for sure that's a great moment to 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 change the habits because uh, well you know changing your environment, it kind of erases old triggers, old context, and it's a, a good moment to start new habits. So, yeah, if we believe that this thing is for us to stay and this way of life, this lifestyle is something that's going to last, then by all means, that's a good moment. Though, I maybe that's a wishful thinking. I don't know. I think we, we, we still will be getting back to some sort of normal. Maybe not normal normal like it used to be, completely but i think we will start going out soon sooner or later and in this case um the habits will change again it's like you know there are those um fat camps i don't like this name but but i i, I don't know the, the better the better um equivalent it's like uh dieting programs when they put people uh, who want to lose weight they bring them to some i don't know external facility somewhere in the other place, not in their homes, but somewhere outside. And they would put them on a strict diet. They would impose uh, exercising regime. They would kind of control what people are eating and how they're exercising. And um, people are gaining great results, like living in such a camp for a month, people would lose a lot of weight. They would become uh, very fit and, you know, really significant transformation happens. But guess what happens when these people come home? 
what it all comes come, comes back yeah i know it's, I, I, it's super super sad it. yeah super sad story Don't because search. because and that's that's and a good illustration of what i'm telling you is that if your lifestyle is now very different you may make an effort and change the things but as soon as it the, the lifestyle changes again you will lose part of the habits i don't want to discourage you know to to <laughs> to um to give some something uh, kind of useful here i think that's a great moment if you have more time and if you have the resources because i mean it's it's normal to be sad these days and not wanting to you know um improve yourself and you know become better version of yourself it's it's okay to be just anxious and sad and deal trying to deal with these emotions but if you feel that you have this energy and you you have this resources and time to um improve yourself that's a good moment to again experiment you what you can do is to try and find for example types of physical activities you enjoy try go to youtube open different tutorials on dancing on exercising you know different types of yoga zumba whatever whatever kind of resonates with you and try and see what you like and this will be a very important insight for future you when you decide to create you know a new physical activity habit for example you will know uh what kind of physical activity brings you joy and that's something i was talking uh a bit earlier about that that it's really really important to make sure that your habits bring you joy because those habits tend to stick you know you can force yeah. yourself into doing things that you don't like and i know that on my personal experience i managed to make myself eating you know keeping sticking to the diet that i hate but i believe is right i was sticking to this diet for years i was sticking to exercise i don't like for years and the, you always pay the price for this they have it you can force yourself in in doing things you don't like but you will pay <laughs> and it will be painful <laughs> like about talking about food i because of these habits i um led myself to a, to an eating disorder and i now working with psych, uh, with a psychotherapist um to overcome this um so again if you if you want to use this time um for your benefit and you're not sure if your lifestyle will change or not that's a good moment to explore what you like what what is healthy or, or you know good in terms of uh, your objectives like you want to be fit what fits this criteria of being fit and also fits the criteria of being pleasurable because you know greg what i think is the big biggest problem with habit formation at least from from my personal understanding of this topic now is that when we choose what habits we want to bring into our lives we think okay my objective is like to lose weight to be fit to be more productive to be that to do that so we come from the objective standpoint and on this way we don't really ask ourselves okay these habits i think will move me closer to my goals which of them i do do i really enjoy which of them really give me energy and happiness we don't ask ourselves about it 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 was like with my example of exercising i never challenged the fact that i don't like this exercise and i was just okay it making me fit it gives me brings me closer to my kind of fitness objective and that's good enough but no it's not good enough <laughs> you really need to think about habits in in terms of pleasure and joy and intrinsic motivation if we put it in psychological terms as well yeah i liked i liked the idea of learning more about yourself during uh, the quarantine like mm-hmm. like they say uh, know thyself so it's a good time <laughs> to do that uh but uh aren't there any habits that could be formed now uh that are connected to context that will be uh that that will remain after uh the sure. pandemic sure. is le- sure. it goes away for example we all uh we all uh spend some time uh, at home even if there uh, is no uh coronavirus we all spend some time at home we all have some morning rituals evening rituals that could True. be i think used Absolutely. to implement habits yeah yeah i would agree if you if you want to 
implement the like change the habits now you should think of the things that are not going to change even uh if we, if and when we get back to normal and that's exactly what you're saying uh when we get back to no normal we will still go home and uh, you know uh, have dinner at home and uh, have our evening rituals and sleep at home so that's the things that you can you can work on now and th this is why i believe it's it's worse for me working on my sleep habits exactly for this reason because i know that even if my lifestyle changes in the next couple months um i will you still, still gotta sleep <laughs> yes, hopefully. I will still benefit from uh, from uh, this evening rituals. So yeah, that's a good um, good catch, Greg. So I think, uh, and also because, as I said in the beginning, sleep habit, habits are so fundamental to any other habit that you want to have. Exercise and nutrition, everything is affected by sleep massively. So that's a good moment to... Um, to again understand um, what makes you sleep better. And what are the problems that you experience with uh, going to with, with falling asleep on time and waking up on time and uh, introducing the habits that can help? Exactly. Uh, which books would you recommend on that? I, I, I know you recommend Stick With It uh, and Atomic Habits. Yeah, right? so the, um, in like during the last years, two great books were published from the authors I've been following for years now. Um, the first one is um, uh, talking about cognitive, <laughs> cognitive abilities under sleep. Uh, <laughs> the, the one uh, is, uh, is um, uh, written by B.J. Fogg, Stanford professor uh, who is notorious for his work in the uh, habits area. He um, created the Tiny Habits Method uh, it's a great method to, to, to change your habits. And he's also a founder of, I think, Persuasion Lab, it's called. Anyway, BJ Fogg, he has written a habit, uh, a book about habits. If you just Google, and we can give the link uh, in the description. The link is in the description, yeah. Yeah. And the other book is uh, uh, written by Wendy Wood. Uh, Wendy Woods, and it's also about habit formation. What what is What I like about this book, it's written by... Uh, the, the true scientist who studied habits for years from scientific perspective. She, she has written um, many articles and the numbers that you hear about habits sometimes, for example, that 40% of our everyday behavior is habits. It's the number from one of her research. So she is um, kind of uh, a, a very... Um, very, very good scientist who, who just uh, sees the scientific side of habits. And um, those two books are, I think, more than enough for a person who just wants to introduce them to the topic of uh, habit formation. Start with these two and uh, that's, that's a kind of treasure, treasure for people who want to change their habits. Which one? Which one is the ultimate must read? So, uh, I, uh, among those books uh, and other books that you usually recommend, uh, uh, not all people will read like five books yeah. on habits. Uh, the one, yeah. If, if the one, if the one, <laughs> that's that's a tricky one. Go with BJ Fogg book. BJ Fogg. Okay. Okay. I, I'll link all those books in the description. Uh, links to Amazon, so you can. Uh, buy them and, and read them uh, and not po postpone this. I'm also really interested in your B2B projects. I know that you are helping businesses create some healthy habits for their clients. Can you please uh, explain how it works? Yeah, so uh, initially, as you know, I started my project as B2C, meaning business to consumer, meaning that I help individuals in, help in um, creating good habits. But um, writing my blog posts and talking to people, I started getting requests from businesses. Like, for example, um, startup founders or um, de developers who create mobile applications, uh, like exercise and mobile application, meditation mobile application, different mobile applications related to wellness and health, uh, from time to time were asking me, okay, I really like your, what you're write about habits, uh, the principles of habit formation, but how can I implement it, integrate it in my application, 
in my business to make my clients um, create good habits with the help of my uh, application or my services. Uh, and that led me to the idea that, first of all, there is a need in, in this um, uh, habit formation kind of knowledge in B2B segment. And uh, moreover, uh, I was inspired thinking that that's a great way for me to touch more lives, to, to help more people because, well, the, my courses are limited to the number of people I can serve, that I can work with, you know, and especially if I talk about one-on-one -on -one work, it's only that small amount of people I can work with. But if I help uh, to create better services, better mobile application, um, helping people to create habits, that would uh, make the effect of my work, the, my impact much bigger. So I really liked that idea. And I started uh, doing this project here and there, um, helping helping to integrate this knowledge of habit formation uh, into, into the services and um, applications, as I said. One of the very recent examples, and it's not an actual client yet, we're in the stage of negotiation and signing the contract, but I'm really looking forward to start to, to start in, um, uh, working with this client uh, because that's actually an owner of fitness club who came up with understanding that um, in order, you know, to, to help their clients effectively and uh, keep their clients loyal, it's not enough, you know, to do some loyalty programs or gamification programs. It's not enough. In the end of the day, you need to help your clients to create a sustainable gym habit. And that's what makes the, the clients to return and renew their membership. And uh, I was so happy to see that uh, people in the fitness industry, people in other industries, wellness-related, health-related, really start think in terms of habits. Not only, you know, thinking about profits, retention, loyalty, but they're really thinking about helping their clients to create habits. And I think that's an ultimate win-win because that's what their clients want. Nobody buys a gym membership thinking that, yeah, we'll go there for three weeks and then I will forget about it and never, never will return, right? They, they, but the usually clients, that's what happens. Unfortunately, yeah. And it's not, it's nobody's fault, really. It's, it's the, the, the result of us not being very well, you know, educated in how, how we form a habit. So what we are discussing now with this potential client is the program that will help their clients, the, the clients of this fitness club, um, to create the gym habit from the very first day. So it's not only about giving them access to the gym, that is fully equipped with all the, 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 the things they need, uh, but also helping their, their clients to understand how habit formation works and making them create this habit and um, introduce fitness in their life. So I am really excited about uh, these kind of projects and I, I don't advertise myself yet widely. Um, most of B2B clients are finding myself while reading my blogs and just approaching me directly. But I'm really thinking now uh, how to make um, this part of my business bigger and maybe eventually make it the biggest part of my business, as as I said, because I think it may help me to have more impact um, and touch more, more people with my habits uh, enthusiasm. But let's put it that way. Well, uh, even if you don't uh, advertise yourself, I, I should do it uh, definitely By sincerely. <laughs> recommend. <laughs> uh, I, I recommend Katerina is amazing and a great expert, a guru in habit formation. So if you're <laughs> interested, I will, I will provide your contact info and links to her blogs in uh, English and in Russian, if you speak Russian. Uh, in the description of this YouTube video. So definitely do subscribe to her. And if you want to uh, install good habits, read your content, uh, maybe use her services if she has time, uh, apply to her boot camps, uh, uh, whatever. Just uh, make it stick, install good habits and uh, don't be too, uh, too upset if something does not work straight away. It's all it's all an experiment. It's all uh, about testing things, doing something, failing, 
fast as uh, founders of startups in Silicon Valley Absolutely. like well to said. Mm -hmm. li 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 like to say so so don't be too upset don't be too uh, demanding uh, to yourself uh, relax a little bit and uh, don't forget to install habits that make you happy that make you relaxed and that uh, do not drain your energy but Absolutely. which replenish it yeah <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much katerina it's been a pleasure Greg, thank you thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed this talk uh if you like this podcast uh, click the like button and then the subscribe button and the bell button next to this video on youtube subscribe to my youtube channel must reader subscribe to this podcast on various podcasting platforms it's everywhere it's uh, apple podcasts spotify deezer all platforms you name it and please leave a comment in the comments section to help me promote these videos to help youtube algorithms notice us thank you for watching and listening have good habits and enjoy your life <laughs> bye bye bye